Sponsored by the Big 98, Nashville's number one for new country and the home of a Bobby Bones show. Welcome to the Rock Interview. We're so glad to bring you an incredibly talented man who has had careers in baseball, professional wrestling, and country music. And he has a brand new book out now. It's called Matt Memories. It is John Alexander Arezzi. John, thanks for coming on the show. Uh, Eric, it's a pleasure to be here. And yeah, it's definitely cool. Thank you so much for inviting me. Well, you know, as I was going through your book, which is just incredible with, with all of the notes and you know, since you have multiple careers in your life, you know, you also have three forwards in the book. Yeah, I, uh, the publisher felt, uh, and I approached them with it, uh, ECW Press, and I was like, well, listen, uh, do you mind if we have multiple forwards? And they were said, as long as they're high profile individuals and people would recognize them, right. uh, go for it. And uh, I was fortunate enough to be able to get three really cool people to write the forwards. One for the baseball part, one for the wrestling, and one, of course, for country music. Well, you know, and you have worked with so many incredible names here in country music. And it was funny, too, as I was uh, going through your book and, and reading chapters. And, and also, it's not bad when you have Stormy Warren on the back here from Sirius Radio touting yes. you in your book. But uh, you and I first met at the Grand Ole Opry back in 2011 uh, when you were working with Sarah Darling at the time. Yeah, just about, just about 10 years ago. Uh, yeah. She debuted in February of 2011. Uh, so yeah, it was a little over 10 years ago. It was crazy. Well, you know, and, and also, you know, speaking of country music artists, you know, you uh, you kick-started Patti Loveless's career. And and also, now, give me to explain this to me. You discovered Kelsey Ballerini. That is a little bit of a, um, uh, it's kind of a hidden fact in a lot of ways. I met Kelsey, ironically, with Suzanne Alexander, who wrote the forward, uh, one of the forwards to the book. And my nephew, Dominic, was here visiting from New York. We were at the Mellow Mushroom in uh, Franklin, right on Main Street. And um, I was managing Sarah at the time. And there was a kid sitting a couple tables away. And she kept looking over. Uh, at me and uh, and then you know as we were getting ready to leave she came uh, up and she was like do you manage Sarah Darling and I was like yes I do uh, she goes my name is Kelsey Ballerini and I'm uh, I live here in Franklin I'm a singer songwriter and she goes and we're friends on Facebook I was like oh okay um, and I said well how many songs have you written Kelsey and she goes I've written about 200 songs I was like no kidding I gave her my card. I've always had an open door policy, no matter where I've worked. And a few days later, she comes in because I, I told her, I said, you come in and sing for me. I, I was the vice president at Black River at the time. Mm -hmm. And I said, I want to hear your three best songs uh, that you've written and the ones that are that resonate the most to you. Not anybody who is advising you or your friends or family. I want to know what what's uh, what Kelsey is all about. And she came into the office and she started singing. Um, and immediately, I was blown away. Immediately, I just knew. I mean, you, you, you could tell when that it factor is there, that indelible thing that's so hard to pinpoint, but I knew. And uh, I stopped her after the second song, and I brought her next door to the executive offices over at Black River, the other part of it, uh, and had her meet with Gordon Kerr, who was the president of the label. And uh, she did the same thing, sang a few songs. And, and Gordon was like, yeah, she's good. But, you know, we have uh, 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 Sarah, we have Kelly. And, you know, she's young. I mean, she's not, she's good. She's not bad. Yeah. Uh, but then I, I just didn't, that was not the answer I wanted to hear. Uh, so I, I, a couple of, I, I Celia Froelich ran our publishing division. And when she got back from lunch, I asked her to take a meeting with Kelsey and I. And I brought Kelsey back to sing for Celia. And Celia saw immediately what I saw, especially on the writing part. Um, and uh, we started working with her to, you know, mentor her. I was giving her navigation through the label, meeting with A&R. Celia starting to hook her up with some writing appointments. But yeah, long story short, it's a long story, but uh, uh, I brought her in. Uh, I guess you could say I discovered her. I worked with her uh, pretty closely for the eight months uh, before I got fired from Black River. and. Um, and then, you know, they signed her to a pub deal not too long after that. And then eventually the record deal came. And uh, but now it's kind of like, um, you know, John Alexander discovered who, you know, uh, <laughs> but, that, but that's the way it goes in Nashville sometimes. And um, and believe me, Kelsey's and, you know, has certainly 
uh, just an incredible young woman and she's done incredible things. And I'm, I'm so very happy for her success. Well, you know, speaking of success too, John, you know, having essentially three very different careers and also utilizing different names throughout them, you know, yes. I mean, you know, and I mean, obviously with wrestling, as you started out in, in managing and everything else, and then you ended up being a professional wrestler also in the ring. And then you were, you know, the, the shows that you created, you know, the radio and TV shows that you created yeah. out, and not to mention, you know, uh, you know, kid out of New York who uh, ends up getting to work with, you know, in baseball with the Mets when you're a fan, but it seems like you've always had an eye for talent throughout all of these careers, John. Yeah. I kind of equate myself um, almost in a way to a minor league manager where, you know, here are the guys in the trenches, they find these young uh, diamonds in the rough, so to speak, and you polish them up and you mentor them and you create opportunity. And then, uh, you know, they take off and ascend to wherever they're going to ascend to. And in my case, a lot of them became pretty big stars. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and then you sit back and you're like, wow, who's the next one? But uh, I, I think maybe that's what God put me on this earth to do is to really help others. And, and, I've, and I've done that along the way in my career and all the different occupations that I've had, but especially in the music business. And, you know, between Kelsey and early on in, in Patty Loveless's career, I quit my job with the Mets to uh, when I found her in a little rock club in North Carolina. Uh, so that changed my entire uh, life. You know, reading your book, you know, Map Memories, uh, one of the things that struck me, besides the incredible photos with you and so many, you know, professional wrestlers that I recognize, the baseball players, obviously the music stars such as you and Dolly Parton and Patty Loveless and all this. But one of the stories that struck me was, you know, uh, kind of like your creation story with your parents and your dad working multiple jobs. Yeah. And it seemed to me as I was reading through it that your life has kind of mirrored your dad, except that you went on to baseball, wrestling and music Mm -hmm. And your dad was working all of his side things simultaneously also. Do you feel yeah. that too? Um, you know, my dad was always someone um, who uh, did the very best he could to provide for us. And, and life was rough back then. And his stuff, I mean, he was, uh, he owned a little grocery store in Brooklyn, New York. And Tony Danza used to deliver groceries for him. Um, uh, ah. And Tony just wrote about him recently on a post at Facebook. But um, uh, but he worked at a trucking company. Then he did the side gig, which was, you know, a, a little shady, I guess you could say. Uh, he was uh, what they would call a bookie, a, a bookmaker, I mean, and, and worked for some people. And in, uh, in, I guess you would say um, organized crime back in the day. Right, right. Uh, but, you know, my dad was – he was on the peripheral. He was on the peripheral and, and just really just took debts. And, uh, you know, turned in the receipts every week to uh, him. But I never did that in my life. But, uh, you know, he would bounce around a little bit. And uh, for me, it, it always has been, um, you have to have a passion for what you do. You got to be totally in love with uh, what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. So when I lose the passion for something, I, I rather would find something else I'm very passionate for than to stick with something that I don't have the passion for anymore. Right. You've already won a historian award, which is incredible. But you know, with the book and it's, and it's been so well received, also, John, I know that you're working on a potential documentary that could be released down the road. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I do some TV work um, for a, uh, uh, a documentary series that's on TV called uh, "Dark Side of the Ring," uh, where they license stuff and they interview me for on camera. And uh, we're putting together the episode that I will be in this year. And a couple of the people associated with that show was like, boy, I mean, your life is, is like, your life needs to be a doc, you know? And, <laughs> and so you get into those conversations and now it's kind of like, I got a production company uh, wanting to work with me here. Uh, I have the folks up in Canada who have interest in putting it together with me. And then there's an, another person who actually, uh, you know, runs uh, one of the labels in town that uh, has some connections in New York. So now we're just kind of putting it all together. Who's going to be the best fit, uh, you know, and, and structure all of that. And because the archives that I have, it's just uh, an, an enormous amount of uh, 
everything I've documented since I was a kid. I, I saved everything that I've ever done from video to film. And so uh, I'm hoping that that thing, um, you know, the seeds are being planted and, you know, you put a little water on it and it starts to sprout. And mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's a long-term project, which uh, any really good documentary gets, takes about a year or two to put together. Obviously, you can get this Map Memories on Amazon, everywhere you buy books. Like you said, the audio book is out. And uh, just, I, I recommend buying the hard copy book. And in fact, next time I see you here in town, you're gonna have to sign my copy for me. Absolutely. But, uh, but to me, it's just so much fun, you know, seeing your life. And I, and I think it's gonna make a great documentary. It may have to be a multi-piece documentary covering each facet of your career. It might. It's a guy with a few different names and a few different high profile careers. And who would think that, you know, somebody did all these crazy things, not only in pro wrestling, but in country music. And then there's that cup of coffee with the Mets. And, and I actually want, I actually wanted to call the book. I should have stayed in baseball because that was truly my passion. And the cup of coffee I had in baseball, as they say, was, it still tastes the best to me. I, I love baseball to this day, but uh, I, I'm very proud of what I've done in my life. And, um, and if anyone wants a signed copy of the book, all they got to do is uh, go to mattmemories.com and there's a link there and I'll uh, sign in and there'll be signed in numbered copies that are available. So it's mattmemories.com and uh, it's a wrestling site, but um, you'll be able to get the book there. Uh, the uh, podcast, uh, you could go to mattmemories.com and there's a link. I mean, basically okay. what I do with the podcast quickly is that I, uh, I did a pro wrestling talk show in New York from 1989 to 96. I saved all the shows. So every week we go back, my co-host and I, we go back 30 years to listen to that show that took place 30 years ago. And then we go like a listen along and we pick it apart, what really happened behind the scenes. Uh, so it's it's kind of a chronological uh a piece of history where thousands of people from around the world are now listening to it because they get hooked in. It's episodic. And so mm -hmm. here I am listening to shows from 30 years ago that I hadn't hear, hadn't heard in 30 years. And we review them every week. Uh, John Arezzi's uh, Matt Memories, I'm sorry, the website is mattmemories.com or directly to the, the podcast is, is a pwspod.com, Pro Wrestling Spotlight, then and now. Well, you know, John, I'm no psychic, but if I was a predicting man, I would say it's just a matter of time before you're back in baseball and then you go back into music again. There it you seems go. like you're making the circle. I mean, you went back to wrestling. I never thought I would. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a historian now, so it's all about history and the archives that I have. I mean, you know, one other thing, I, I have the only known footage of Andre the Giant's uh, debut at Madison Square Garden. Uh, so I'm in conversations with uh, several companies right now about the, those films, and, and Andre is a mythical fig figure. And what there's something guy. called there's something called NFTs now that uh, this thing might have a value. Well, I, I'll tell you what, your life and your career certainly has had a value, and so has your new book, Map Memories. Making sure that our viewers uh, get their copy of it. I say get the hard copy, and if you want one signed go to the website, John Alexander Arezzi. Thank you so much for coming on The Rock Interview. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much, Eric. Sponsored by The Big 98, Nashville's number one for new country and the home of a Bobby Bones show.